On Tuesday, we talked about why we celebrate on Sunday instead of the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. Today, we're going to explore the biblical roots of the Sabbath and its connection with creation and salvation. We're going to use Pope St. John Paul II's 1998 apostolic letter, Dies Domini, Latin for the Day of the Lord, as our guide. The book of Genesis shows us God and his example for us. Throughout the creation story in chapter 1, we hear the refrain, God saw that it was good. This reveals the secret for a proper understanding of the created world and for its eventual regeneration. John Paul II says, The world is good insofar as it remains tied to its origin and, after being disfigured by sin, it is again made good when, with the help of grace, it returns to the one who made it. So the world bears the imprint of goodness because it came from the hand of God. At the end of the sixth day, when God completed his work, the world was ready for human activity. On the seventh day we hear in Genesis, God rested from all his work which he had done. This glimpse of the relationship between the Creator and the created world shows we are to follow this example. But how do we understand Sabbath rest? The first definition of rest in the online Miriam Rubster Dictionary is a bodily state characterized by minimal functional and metabolic activities. We normally think of rest as inactivity. But we hear in the Gospel of John, Jesus speaking about the Sabbath precept that my father is still is working still and I am working, he says in John chapter 5, 7, verse 17. We know that God, the creative act which founds the world, is always at work. So what does it mean when God rested? The divine rest of the seventh day is not about an inactive God but emphasizes the fullness of what has been accomplished. It is God gazing upon his very good work, full of joyous delight. John Paul II explains, this is a contemplative gaze, which does not look to new accomplishments, but enjoys the beauty of what has already been achieved. He casts this gaze on all things, but in a special way upon man, the crown of creation. The Sabbath precept is part of the Creator's plan. Set within the Decalogue of the commandment is a defining and indelible expression of our relationship with God. The Jewish tradition recognizes a nuptial intensity which marks the relationship between God and his people. God sanctifies the seventh day with a special blessing and within a dialogue of the covenant, a dialogue of marriage and uninterrupted love. And it has a close link between the order of creation and the order of salvation. The Shabbat commandment in the Old Testament links not only with God's rest after the days of creation, but also with salvation, which he offers to Israel in liberation for the slavery of Egypt. It is the same God who rejoiced in his creation on the seventh day and glories in liberating his children from Pharaoh. So to repeat, God's rest is not inactivity, but joyful rest rooted in his plan for creation and salvation. Next week, we'll continue looking at the blessing of the Sabbath and keeping it holy.